Hey, what's up? My name is Tackless, and today we're going to be looking at the Survival Conductor, a really handy piece of code that's already pre-built to get our, um, like a wave-based game where the enemies get increasingly harder every round. This is what it looks like. We can obviously kill these guys, and after a while, the round will end, we'll get a break, and then they'll start sending even nastier guys at us. Really handy bit of code. I've been using it quite a bit recently, and it's just super helpful um, now before I get too far into this I just like to mention that I did actually hold a poll on Twitter as to what people wanted to see for my next tutorial and those options were simple variables or point of interest or auto equip weapons or survival mode settings and what I'm doing now one um, won the poll so if you wanted to see one of those other options instead of this then you can definitely head over to my Twitter page and for future polls that I might hold for tutorials, you can cast your vote in. I am tw on Twitter, at Tackless. All right, so let's get into the tutorial. Now this is pretty easy to get set up and started, but the fun stuff and more complex stuff starts uh, when you start customizing a little bit farther. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this. So step one is let's grab a player proxy. Put down a player proxy and we're gonna choose on player spawned. And then we're going to go over to the AI tab and we're gonna select AI conductor survival. Now we've got a couple of AI conductors. The conductor classic just makes the linear um, level auto populate with demons that don't respawn. This one will keep making more and more demons at harder difficulties until you die. So this is the one we're gonna be playing with. And this one's a lot of fun. So we place it and then set active. Just like that, it's working, it's done, we're ready to go. Now, there's a lot of customization and flexibility that we can have, however. First thing I'd recommend is probably to put a delay on it because at the moment, as you saw when I previewed it, the enemies will start coming at you immediately. Let's put a bit of a delay on it. Like a 10 second delay. There we go. So the player's got 10 seconds to get their bearings before demons start racing at them. Now let's take a look at the settings of the conductor. So, um, the name is whatever you want it to be. Conductor controlled AI is 12. Unfortunately, we can't put more than 12. That means that only 12 demons can exist at any given time. Wave duration, um, wave duration is just how long a wave lasts for. 60 seconds is not that long. I, it, it depends on your game, I guess, what you're going for. Um, but I tend to turn this up or we'll turn it down just for the sake of, um, testing this. The break duration is the time between waves. Um, the time between encounters is the number of the, the time between enemies that spawn. Um, if you want it to be more intense, you want to turn this down. If you want it to be less intense, you'll turn this up. Um, but yeah, turning it down definitely makes things a lot more intense. Health modifier, pretty straightforward. This is just the percentage of health that they have from their you know normal base health. I tend to turn the damage modifier down quite a bit. Because um, unless you give the player just a non-stop overflow of ammo and armor, after a few rounds, the player will die very, very, very fast when there's, say, five manky bus, manky by, whatever. The big fat things on screen and some revenants and some barons of hell. When you have all of those on screen at once, it's almost impossible to survive uh, if the damage modifier is at 100%. So I tend to turn it down. Um... Now, we can't set variables on these themselves, which is unfortunate, but we can add variables to buffs and whatnot for the enemies to make the enemies like grow stronger over time. So that's how we can um, change it up a little bit, make our conductor a little bit more of our own. Now let's look at it behaving differently depending on if there is a, um, if the round is active or not. So we'll select this and we'll go on wave started. So then let's go over to speaker and put on facility voice speaker. Play. Now we get to pick a fun sound. It doesn't really matter what you pick, but. Hmm. We're just gonna do, um, 
We're just going to do attention. So that's what it'll say when the round is started. When the round ends, we're going to do a similar thing. Let's bring it over here. Play another voice. And then... There are a lot of warnings. I always take way too long to pick a sound. We'll do environment stabilized. There we go. So when it um when the round starts, we'll get attention. When the round ends, it'll say environment stabilized. And if the player has their subtitles on, like I do, it'll also show them a little bit of text for that. Now there's all kinds of other fun stuff that we can do as well. Now I built a game that was reminiscent of Killing Floor, which I'm actually thinking about doing a live stream of it probably tomorrow, building the entire thing from scratch. So let's do that. Let's grab a room. Um, let's see. Computer room's good. Place it away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to put a teleporter between them. So let's go to gameplay. I'm going to put a teleporter pad. Now it's worth mentioning, do you see that arrow below the teleporter pad? That's the direction that the player will look when he spawns in at this teleporter pad. So I'll put it there, drop to the floor, and then we're going to do a similar thing over here. Uh, I probably should take that and drop it. Then we'll go ahead and really quickly link these two together. Teleport 2. So once again, on entered, teleport 2. There we go. Now let's say that we want, that we want this so that you can always teleport out of that room, regardless if the round has started or stopped, but only be able to teleport to that room from this teleporter when there when there's a break. So pretty much it's like it's a two-way door when the round is on break, but when the round has started, it's a one-way door. Let's see if we can do that. So we're gonna once again go to on wave started here, pick this bit of code, and we're gonna go over to the teleporter pad and we're gonna put disable teleporter. Then when we're going to go to on break started, select that, take it to the same teleport pad, enable teleporter. Now this teleporter can only, um, it'll, it'll only be able to be teleported between rounds. Now let's also put a point of interest here. Now I am planning on doing a tutorial further on a point of interest, so I'm not going to go into this in too much depth, but on wave started, um, actually first let's go to on break on break started we're going to go to this teleporter and we're going to set point of interest then we can go over to that point of interest um yeah we'll just leave it like that i'll go into further settings in a different video on how point of interests work but then once you set a point of interest it'll be there forever until you removed it so on wave started we're going to go to that same teleporter and remove point of interest clear point of interest so now between rounds it'll show an icon here and you'll be able to teleport from here to there so that's kind of the um, a little bit more interesting and complex stuff but let's look at something that's really useful like building up a variable um between rounds so i let's see we're going to select this and i'm going to make a whole new string of code over here i like to go off the same nodes as much as i can just to save on room but it's also good to keep everything nice and categorized so then we're gonna go and we're gonna select a variable let's pick a number and we're gonna make a new number and we're going to add to this number so this number we're going to call enemy health and then let's pick a good icon of a skull and put the initial value to one there we go so on the wave started it'll increase this variable which starts at one by whatever we pick here the value here is currently one let's put this to like 75 there we go and then what we can do so that this um, enemy health variable actually benefits 
the daemons is we're gonna make an AI proxy and on AI spawned pick another AI proxy we're going to apply buff this buff that we're gonna add is a health buff so I'm gonna press left trigger to be able to add a variable or whatever it is on your system pick that and then we're gonna select enemy health there we go so this will buff the enemies by whatever that is or whatever this variable is at um, it's a little bit tricky to actually see but we'll, we'll give it a shot it's worth mentioning that the um, survival AI conductor can get really really quite difficult in later rounds so if you're gonna make a survival game with the intention that the player can play and survive realistically for upwards of 30 minutes, you're gonna need a pretty decent um, player upgrading system. And I got the BFG just for good measure. Attention. So we got attention and our guys are spawning. Probably should have added some way to get ammo back. It is worth mentioning that these, um, that this spawner, or the, the conductor, doesn't care how many enemies you kill. It just sends enemies at you for as many as you can take for the time period. There we go. Environment stabilized. Poof. We can teleport through. Poof. We can teleport back. All right. So we're between rounds. Not a lot's happening. We'll be buying stuff, refilling ammo, whatever floats our boat. Now it's hard to tell because, well, the, the super shotgun is really quite strong. But let's try just meleeing and see if we can gauge how many melee hits it takes to kill these guys. So it's taking a lot. We're definitely dealing with tougher than normal enemies. And I died. Now when you die, if you spawn too far away, enemies tend to despawn. Um, it's a nice little safety measure so that you don't respawn in a room full of enemies. They will get back in pretty quickly. Now I just happen to know from experience, uh, these, I think they're called Hell Knights? They definitely don't take that many shots to kill normally. So this is definitely getting tougher. It's more noticeable on the enemies that don't die instantly in one shot. Oh, hey. Look at that. Ammo. Forgot I gave myself that. So, yeah. This is pretty much how the survival, um, survival thing works. Now, there isn't a ton of flexibility in, in the sense that you don't get to pick your own enemies. You don't get to pick exactly what they drop or have like a random chance of that through the survival conductor but for what it does it does very well if you need more flexibility you're gonna have to build something from scratch it's gonna take a lot more time and effort than than the uh, survival conductor hopefully this helps I know quite a few people have been asking about this uh, once again if you have an idea for a tutorial leave a comment below or ask on Twitter and I will definitely see what I can do and I am hoping to do a stream of Doom probably tomorrow, because I've got the day off tomorrow. Um, yeah, so let me know what you guys think, or if you're interested in that live stream, and I will see you guys later.